building SDC powered applications. Your speaker today is Ilya Beta. Ilya, the floor is yours. Thank you. Nice to see all of you here. And today I'm going to do a lot of live demos. And I hope everything went well, but let's start with small introduction about me. So I am CTO and founder of uh, Beta Software. For the last five years, uh, we have been uh, developing various kinds of healthcare related apps for our clients across all over the globe. Yeah, I passionate about uh, participating in various kinds of uh, conferences, connectathons, and uh, working with the community to make uh, Fire a good tool for uh, modern healthcare. Yeah, and also I, I would like I, I like to create open source tools. I believe in the power of, power of open source, and today I'm going to demonstrate some of them. So. Uh, all these examples that I will show you uh, uh, is not some uh, it, it is not some theoretical stuff. Uh, it's all real life cases for uh, um, for for our clients for Severity Network and Create Health. Initially, we uh, worked with Create Health, Create product, and then uh, they merged with Severity Network. And maybe some of you are familiar with Severity Network because uh, they won a, a kind of award a few uh, days ago from a patient check. Yeah, now all of us are working together on creating cool healthcare software. So uh, my uh, speech today will be about forms because in the uh, healthcare, you need to create forms anyway. You need to create forms for some uh, patient details, maybe together some demographics, maybe together uh, some data about patients' conditions or immunization or whatever else to create some health plans and so on. Uh, and uh, uh, when you just start to build the app, it may be pretty simple. You just need to hire a few developers who will choose their preferred uh, technology stack, maybe something based on the JavaScript or something for the mobile or whatever else, and just build a simple UI that interacts with the Fire server, and that's fine. But uh, this uh, prototype uh, can suddenly become more sophisticated. And this thing has happened with Create Health when we understood that uh, our forms uh, that we start building for a check-in process and uh, the, one of the uh, features that Create Health provided is fully automated paperless uh, check-in flow. Uh, we found that uh, we should work with uh, different clinics and in each clinic uh, there might be slightly differences in the check-in forms and we need to somehow adjust the UI and uh, uh, it is possible that uh, there will be lots and lots of clinics and uh, developers will not be able to cover uh, all this load with uh, manually adjusting forms. So uh, this approach when a software developer just writes some code that represents a form is not working anymore. It is not working anymore. We need to move it somewhere on a more high level to move it uh, to a person such a business analyst who will can interact with clinic and then uh, create something that uh, will create a form. So software engineer sh should create this kind of tool instead of actual form and business analyst should work with this tool to create an actual form. And lucky for us, uh, the definition for this tool is uh, already exist in Fire World. It's called uh, SDC Implementation Guide. And uh, uh, let's say a few words about SDC. So uh, yesterday there was a session from uh, Brian. He presented SDC uh, very, uh, very well. Uh, but uh, if you uh, didn't have a chance, for some reason to visit his check, I will say a few words about SDC. And basically, SDC is uh, a no-code platform on top of Fire, or I try to define it this way. So instead of uh, creating a code that create a form, you need to create a Fire questionnaire. And this Fire questionnaire will uh, represent everything. The UI, population logic, extraction logic, and so on. Uh, so our schema uh, will look like this. 
uh, software engineer need to develop uh, uh, a software that follows SDC implementation guide. Then business analyst create a questionnaire. This questionnaire evaluated by uh, SDC. And finally, we got a form that uh, our customers may use for the check-in or in, either, in any other various scenarios. Uh, so uh, looks pretty nice. And uh, let's see uh, what we need to start using it. So first of all, uh, your application should be fire first. You need some SDC implementation and the uh, questionnaire designer or form builder. Let's start with uh, what I define as fire first application. So uh, by fire first application, I mean an app that built on top of fire. It uses fire as a main API, it uses fire as an application framework, and uh, it should be extended in a fire way. So uh, you are not going to uh, think in terms of uh, database tables, uh, some uh, columns in these uh, databases and this low level stuff. You need to think on a more high level. You need to think in, in the terms of fire resources, how they combine to each other and how to uh, create a data model on top of fire on, on, on this high level. And also when you need to extend the fire, because unfortunately fire covers only a healthcare area and for real life apps, it's not enough. You always have some related areas uh, that you should create code for. So for, for, for these cases, it's uh, preferable to extend up in a fire way. Unfortunately, fire do not provide uh, such a thing as a custom fire resources. The set of resources is fixed, but uh, we can do it. Uh, in, in the same way, we define uh, REST API in the same way how we define REST API for fire, define search parameters and so on and so on, and uh, get uh, the app of, uh, that looks and feel uh, like a fully featured fire app. Yeah. And uh, if your app built on top of this basis, you just need uh, SDC implementation, and uh, it is the first open source project that I will use today. It's called 8box SDC. And uh, another tool, Questionnaire Designer, uh, it's uh, also open source tool I developed. It's called SDC IDE. And uh, today I'm go, I, I will show how you can adjust form with uh, this tool. Initially, I start working on uh, SDC uh, on February, February 2020. It was a nice time when all of us can uh, meet uh, together on offline events. It was a nice time in Sydney when uh, I start creating uh, SDC implementation guide uh, backend. And then I continue improving it continuously. Uh, I participated uh, the all following connectathons, participated with the questionnaire work group, start using this practice for uh, curate health and severity network. And finally, on the previous day of days, I presented the first version of SDC idea, a, a UI that allow you to uh, adjust your forms with a glance. So uh, what's our plan for today? Uh, I will not focus on visual part of the app. I will focus on more uh, complex part uh, on form population, form data extraction. So uh, first of all, let's uh, review the form life cycle. And uh, also I will provide some insights uh, what uh, I'm going to do next. I hope it uh, uh, help you with uh, following uh, my speech. So initially, I will demonstrate some user interface of uh, a form that represents uh, patient health and lifestyle. Then I will apply some changes to the questionnaire that defines this UI and add one more field. It will be filled uh, to end information about patient's immunization. Uh, then uh, we see that this field in the user interface, we see a resulting uh, field in the questionnaire response. Uh, af after that, I will create uh, a mapper uh, that uh, take uh, data from questionnaire response, represent it as transaction bundle and save to uh, the patient's data in the fire backend. Uh, after that, I, I will uh, loop uh, a cycle by uh, creating uh, populate expressions that uh, uh, take data from uh, fire backend and uh, put it in the UI. After that, we will face some small issues, some bugs. I will fix it on the fly. And finally, we will got a full featured working application. Okay, so let's start with the fun part. Let's start with a live demo. 
Uh, on my screen, uh, you can see uh, on the left hand side uh, a development version of uh, Severity Network Health and Lifestyle form. On the right hand side, you can see a uh, mobile application for uh, Curate Health, and it represents uh, the same form in the mobile way. So we can apply some changes here. Let's keep it in scene. You see that diet is disappeared, and so on. It works. It's a kind of application. And now we need to add a new input in, in these two fields, uh, input to enter information about patient immunization. Let's switch to the development mode to SDC IDE and see how it uh, looks like. Uh, first of all, I see some uh, initial launch context. It basically re represents my uh, a patient resource for me. Uh, here you can see a questionnaire that defines this form, and now you can see a first uh, differences. So here I represented some uh, hidden fields that used for internal purposes. So it's a gender and a patient ID. Also here you can see a resulted questionnaire response. Uh, yeah. Here you can see a, a mapper, and uh, I will talk about, about it a bit later. And finally, uh, a transaction bundle that will, that will be applied to save uh, patient data. Let's update it. Yeah, now you can see that I have an allergy for muscles. It's not true. Let's remove it, uh, save the form. Yeah, and it works just fine. Let's start uh, updating this form and add field for immunization, for my immunization. So uh, let's... Uh, Make it a bit closer. Yeah. Uh, let's start with copying and paste. The, some simple programming always start with copying and paste. Let's rename allergies to immunization. And you can see that everything is updating live on the right part uh, of the screen. We need to change a link ID. And well, you said. Let's skip uh, initial expression uh, as it is, because we don't need it for now. Uh, and uh, yeah, obviously we need to choose that we got COVID-19 immunization. Okay, uh, the form seems to be working and let's try to save it. You can uh, already think that nothing will go on because uh, uh, there is no logic how to extract this information into uh, my uh, uh, into the data on a fire server. Let's restore it. Yeah, and uh, let's proceed with uh, mapping. So initially, SDC provided uh, three options for data extraction. The first option is uh, to extract everything to observation. Another way is to use structure definition, and the third most powerful way is to use uh, a structure mapping fire resolves. And uh, usually when you work with uh, structure mapping, you need to use fire mapping language. And uh, to be honest, I do not like it very much. So I decided to use uh, uh, a bit uh, different tool called JUT. And uh, let's see how uh, you can uh, do it with JUT. So uh, let's, first of all, let's add a link to this uh, JUT mapper. Uh, we need to find an extension for it. Yeah, like uh, this. Let's just uh, copy and paste and change a name. So instead of diet, it will be immune. Yeah, okay. You can see uh, the uh, mapping template here. I lost again information about immunization. Yeah, and let's uh, update our JUT mapper to uh, generate a transaction bundle that will insert, uh, that will create immunization fire resource for my patient. Uh, we are creating a transaction bundle. Let's add source type that is bundle and then add 
entry that will contain only one element with a re request uh, method post URL fire application. Yeah, looks. Let's uh, define the resource itself. So first of all, we need to set up a required field status that is completed. Then I need to define a patient that is a reference to a patient resource. Okay, yeah, and uh, now we face the first uh, interesting part. We need to somehow get uh, my patient ID and put it here. So we will use an embedded fire pass that will be executed over our questionnaire response. Item where link ID equal patient ID. Okay, yeah. And then we need to get answer value string. Yeah, and since everything in Firepass is uh, an array, we need to get the first element. Cool. We built a reference, nice. Uh, the next step is to add a vaccine code here. So we will use uh, the same technique. Type of vaccine code is codable concept. So uh, let's do it uh, this way. And uh, instead of patient, let's collapse it here, expand it there. Yeah, we need to, oh, it's typo in the link ID, but I think just a typo. Oh, let's fix it. No. Okay, let's choose. Let it be here. Yeah, name is correct. I'm more confident right now. Uh, load immunization extract. Uh, place here link ID and uh, you can see that uh, this link, uh, this uh, question is embedded another, into another question, health and lifestyle. So we need to iterate over all items for the questionnaire. Uh, yeah. Uh, and uh, it's not string, it's a uh, coding. Yeah, and now we got the vaccine code, it's codable concept coding, okay. We can press apply and if screen will reload, that means that everything is okay. Finger crossed, yeah, okay. Uh, the first step is done. Let's go to the immunization and see that, uh, a new, that new resource is created. Unfortunately, we miss this, this data in the form because the population is not implemented yet. Let's fix this issue. And uh, to load information about patient immunization, we will use a source query. So first of all, let's define this uh, source query extension. We, I will use my favorite copy and paste technique. Uh, da -da -da. I hope it's correct. Yeah, and then we need to add a contained uh, bundle here. Something went wrong here. So let's uh, do some debugging and check what is uh, incorrect here. So 
Bu It's correct. Immunization extract, uh, source query with immunization, and uh, is this one. Replace the ID. Yep, it worked fine. Okay, now we can return back to fire format. Uh, okay, uh, I fixed the form, but uh, nothing is uh, populated because uh, the source query is incorrect. Let's fi fix the source query first. So we need to request the immunization and uh, the status is uh, completed. Yeah, and then let's go to the definition of the uh, question and replace this one with uh, ID of our bundle and we need to use vaccine code instead of code and immunization uh, source entry. Again, some, somewhere there is a typo. Still, let's check. Uh, Bundle request. Mm -hmm. Some debugging. Mm, yeah. Okay, let's fix it on fly. I missed a P here. Okay, save it here. I need to save it in the mapper. Yeah, and uh, Complete it. Yeah, it worked. Nice. I got my populated da data here. Cool. Uh, let's proceed with more uh, complicated stuff and uh, try to select uh, multiple immunization. And uh, when we do it, you can see that uh, the system works in, in not uh, the way how we expect it to work. So instead of uh, creating multiple immunizations, we get one immunization with uh, a set of various coding in the codable concept that basically is incorrect. So uh, let's update our mapper to create a multiple immunization. And for this purpose, I will need to use a JUT function called map that uh, accept uh, a variable. Yeah, but uh, before this, uh, let's use some variables. It uh, will make uh, the code more uh, readable. So let's define variable patient ID that will use uh, this fire pass expression. And then let's define codings variable that will use another fire pass expression. Okay. Yeah, once we define all, oops. Yeah, uh, I need to repeat this part. Yeah, uh, let with uh, patient ID, sorry for that. Patient ID and uh, Codings. Uh, okay. Find body here. We know we don't need this dash. We need to place coding here and patient ID place here. Cool. Everything's worked. Refreshing. Yeah. 
uh, everything works fine. Uh, need to restore some demo data, add more uh, vaccinations. Yeah, and now uh, let's proceed with our map function that uh, accepts uh, codings, iterate over them as uh, coding. And now we define uh, body here. Uh, yeah, let's see how it looks like. Yeah, now it looks just fine. We're creating a stream immunization, not one immunization with various coding. Uh, also, it should be like this, and we can add uh, text for the whole codable uh, concept uh, like this. Mm. Oh, it's obviously this one. Yeah. Mm. Text it here, coding is here, code, everything is correct. Okay, uh, now let's save uh, this form. And uh, you can see that uh, somehow we get uh, two vaccinations for COVID. And when we keep uh, applying changes, uh, the data is growing because uh, there is no restriction in creating resources. You need to somehow fix this issue and we will uh, fix it by switching from uh, from regular create to a conditional create let's add check for the patient id and also let's check for vaccine code Coding.code. Okay, the conditional create in place. Let's uh, remove all data from a database. Okay, refresh it. Yeah, everything is cleaned up. Select some uh, immunization, save it for the first time, save it for the second time, and save it for the third time. Everything works correct. Only one immunization exists, uh, the duplication. Some duplications are not created. And uh, add uh, more of them, gain, save. And now we face uh, the last issue, uh, how to remove element. Because if I remove element, Actually, it do not update my medical history because uh, this mapper is append only. So uh, to remove element uh, from my medical history, I can use a conditional delete, but conditional delete is not defined, is not strictly defined as part of the file specification. It may delete all data or may write an error. So I will use uh, another approach for it. I will use a pure SQL query to remove this data. So let's uh, create such query. So by this query, I can get all immunizations. Then I need uh, to restrict all of them by MI user. So on a storage layer, we are using uh, Postgres SQL and store all file data in the JSONB format. So this syntax is for uh, Postgres JSONB. Let's copy ID of my patient from this useful debug information. Okay, run query. Now I got all observation for my patient. Uh, then uh, uh, let's discuss what we are going to do. So by deleting ob observation, I mean that I need to delete all observation for a patient except uh, observations that uh, exist in a form. So we need to add extra condition. And let's write this extra condition. So we'll use JSON, JSON knife Postgres extension to uh, define a Pass expression inside the JSONB. 
to get access to a Vexen code. It's pretty similar to Firepass, but uh, uh, it uses it uses JSON as a definition of a query. It's pretty straightforward how it works. And we need to check that this code is uh, contains in a array. Again, we're using JSON B everywhere. Let's uh, decide that we need to keep only one. Let's copy this code. Yeah, and uh, now we need to add, uh, if we run this query, it will, oh, we need to convert this expression to JSONB as well, because this ex expression operates, uh, JSON. this expression operates with uh, Postgres arrays, not JSON arrays. Yeah, well, now we can see that we get an element with this code, but we need to get elements that uh, has another code. So we need to add not here. Okay. Okay, yeah, uh, these two elements. The next step, replace, select with uh, delete and uh, returning ID. Oh, and we can see the two immunizations were deleted. That's exactly what we want. And the final step is to place this uh, SQL somehow in this mapper. For this purpose, we need to create uh, custom resource that I previously mentioned. Uh, uh, resource eight box query that allow us to represent uh, SQL as a kind of uh, API. So let's do it. Let's uh, save this. Oh. Save this query and add some uh, parameterization. ID and for these codes, we will just call, call it run skip codes. Uh, let's save. Okay. Uh, uh, I prefer to use some human readable name instead of ID. So let's uh, let's use. Uh, remove in immunization okay yeah that's fine and then the final step define uh, parameters define patient id as as a requirement as a required parameter with type of uh, string and define another parameter that we call keep codes and the type is almost the same it also required and type string okay now let's see how we can uh, call this uh, query as uh, an api we need to use this id and we can uh, call it uh, this way uh, query ID of the query patient ID is uh, this one and uh, keep codes is this one Oh, sorry, it was a typo. There, help me here. Yeah, and you can see that nothing is deleted because uh, uh, we need to keep this resource. If we choose some uh, another ID, you can see that the resource was deleted and it deleted from there. Okay, uh, let's uh, add uh, this uh, call to our transaction bundle. Uh, and for this, uh, I will use another uh, JUT. Uh, function 
called uh, concat. That accepts uh, arguments of a list and uh, return another list. Okay. Yeah. Okay, cool. It worked. Let's up update the screen to fix identation. And let's continue creating our query. We need to create a URL for it. Let's copy a base part of it from here. You can see that patient ID is already here. And uh, now we need to add uh, this, uh, let's close this one, uh, we skip codes element. Yeah, uh, keep codes and we need to do some tricks here. Keep codes. Okay. Uh, finally, let's define what keep codes is. So it will be a, a fire pass expression uh, on top of uh, this fire pass expression. Something like this. Mm -hmm. Codes, codings. Uh, oh, it's true because nothing is here. Okay, yeah, something placed here. Uh, now uh, uh, let's add one more. Uh, you will see that uh, uh, data in a just a second. You can see that uh, it's a kind of weird format because it's an uh, uh, array from closure and we need to fix all this stuff by uh, rejoining this array over the comma, uh, with a comma. So we need to call another function here. The first argument of this function is uh, a delimiter that will be used for joining in, for joining. And another argument is an array that we would like to join. And uh, now you see that uh, it looks just fine. Our two codes are split by comma and wrapped with uh, brackets, exactly as it was in our request. So let's apply these changes. Query mm. of immunization patient ID. Oh, yeah. Uh, I missed this one here. Yeah. Let's apply. Yeah. And it worked. So let's remove all this stuff. Press apply. Show the snow immunizations here. Uh, let's add our COVID immunization, save it, everything is fine because I was a bit quicker than the UI. Okay, that's fine, immunization is here. And uh, now let's uh, switch back to our test and application, create health application and update these screens. You can see that new field is added and I can uh, choose another don't really matter what I choose here. Uh, I, I can choose another immunization here. Also all these changes uh, were applied to the web version. I can edit my 
optimization here as well. You can save it and save the whole questionnaire, update uh, UI, and uh, it works just fine. So uh, I hope uh, you will see how these uh, tools could work together. Uh, you almost do not see this backend part. You mostly see the UI, but these tools are working together, uh, provide you opportunity to build uh, forms without any code, like uh, in a no code style on top of fire. Uh, if you are interested in SDC, here are some useful links uh, to a previous presentation from the dev days from Lloyd McKenzie and Brian Postelwaite. And here is a link for my another YouTube video that may be useful for you. Uh, also some useful link for the SDC specification and the questionnaire stream on the fire chat. Please uh, join us and, uh, can, uh, and work with us to make an SDC a more powerful tool. Uh, finally, if you would like to launch all this uh, uh, software I shown today, just go to this link. Uh, everything is readme. If you face some issues, feel free to write it on the GitHub or just contact me at uh, FireChat. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, I hope you enjoy the presentation and uh, now you can ask uh, your question. We have something like five minutes. Yeah. Yeah, we do actually have a few questions. Um, the first one is how much is structured data capture in this instance dependent upon aid box by Health Samurai? Uh, so uh, the whole part about uh, population uh, about data population and the creating source query is built on top of a pure SDC without any extra aid box features. Uh, for the extraction, it uses Jude that provided as part of aid box, but uh, Jude is an open source tool that could be used separately. And uh, I think the more uh, the most uh, powerful aid box feature that I demonstrated is uh, uh, SQL on top of fire, but uh, you can uh, do it uh, without it, but it will be, will be more uh, sophisticated to do. Yeah. Okay. And the next question is, is the launch context of SDC and AIDBox compatible with Smart on Fire? Uh, so it's uh, a good question because initially uh, in the SDC launch context uh, were introduced uh, to be similar to uh, Smart on Fire launch context. But uh, uh, now uh, we thinking about make it more, uh, uh, more flexible and allow to use uh, more than just Smart on Fire context. So it's, uh, uh, the discussion is still in progress, so please uh, join our uh, calls and uh, there you will get the most recent uh, information about uh, this uh, question. Yeah, also all, all information about this topic could be found in the fire chat. Yeah, we're, we're still discussing it. Okay, I think that is all we have currently. If anyone has any other questions, Please post them in the Q and A box. Um, it does look like there's another one, but I think Brian Postlewaite might have answered it. It's where can we learn more about Jute and how to use it for mapping of fire resources? The GitHub. Then there's a link that's healthsamurai slash jute.clj yeah. has info on syntax. But where can information examples on how to use for mapping fire resources be found? Mm. Uh, together with Health Samurai, we are working on uh, some tutorials to demonstrate how uh, JUT could be applied for fire. Because yeah, uh, JUT uh, is a more general tool. It, uh, used, uh, it could be used for any kind of mappings, not just for fire. And uh, soon uh, we will uh, provide uh, some examples, uh, some tutorials, how to map uh, everything with uh, Jude. And I think that uh, th th this is my uh, presentation may be used as a kind of introductory to Jude because I demonstrated maybe some uh, most required features in the mapping. Yeah. 
All right. Well, that looks like you have answered all of the questions we currently have. So thank you so much for this wonderful session. Um, thank you, Ela, for sharing your knowledge with us. And thank you to the attendees for joining us today. Um, if you do happen to come up with any additional questions, please post them in the Q&A box in Whova. And I know he will be monitoring that throughout the week. Um, yeah. We'd also appreciate it if you would rate the session by clicking on the link in Whova in the session information. Um, and thanks again. And that concludes our session. Yeah. Thank you very much for joining us today. And uh, see you on the next Dev Days. Thank you. Take care, everyone. Yeah. Bye-bye.